CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Lauren Pastrana and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. A live look right now at downtown Miami where clear skies, a little chilly too. No complaints here. Next Weather Chief Meteorologist Ivan Cabrera joins us now with what we can expect as we slide into Art Basel weekend. Are things going to warm up for us? We're going to warm up, absolutely. Uh, but we're also going to be looking at some storms uh, heading into a Sunday. So a bit of a change in the uh, forecast here, and we'll talk more about it. 72, we have recovered nicely from earlier temperatures. Take a look at the numbers here from this morning. Uh, we had temperatures in the 50s, widespread here, 64 in Key West, 61 in Marathon and there's that 57 in Miami across interior neighborhoods. So we had temperatures 52 in Kendall and low to mid 50s in general. We do have a bank of clouds that continues to roll in those cumulus clouds as the winds have now shifted and are coming in on shore and that's going to moderate temperatures over the next few days. Look at the numbers here. Low 70s and even upper 60s by 11 o'clock and unlike what we did yesterday. So we're running about 10 degrees warmer uh, for the overnight temperatures, particularly with the stereo of high pressure ringing us on the southern bank of it. Those East winds that will at times bring us a couple of isolated showers. That would be about it. Nothing organized until we get into Sunday. That's what I'm tracking. The next front is going to be coming in with uh, plenty of moisture here, some showers, even some thunderstorms. We'll watch that closely. Uh, the forecast for Sunday really hasn't changed. I'm still going for 50% uh, coverage. And then the problem will be with the same front. It's going to stall to our south and then another high takes over to the north. And we're going to be in that windy sandwich here where we have the pressure differences. And so that's going to bring in and drive in numerous showers heading into next week. A lot of cloud cover and temperatures at least are going to be steady. You'll see that in the seven day forecast, but there's the east to eventually southeast wind that will continue bringing in some isolated showers through the end of the week and heading into a Saturday as well. It's not until Sunday that we get into the potential for some heavier rainfall here. Something nothing torrential, but just keep in mind Sunday will be the wetter of the two weekend days. Overnight temperatures tonight. Look how different it is when you switch on that onshore wind coming off the water there. Upper 60s is what we're doing with low 70s for the keys and then for tomorrow we're already approaching 80 degrees. That's typical for this time of year, so nothing unusual there. We'll do that again with a lot of clouds. Uh, you know, this would be on and off cloudy periods here with a couple of isolated showers. Coverage only at 10%. We'll leave it at 10% for Saturday and then on Sunday that's when we start getting into bigger rain chances before we get that front stalling out. It'll turn breezy as well the entire week. I think for next week we're going to get that uh, very stiff uh, wind coming off the water and that's going to moderate and at least hold temperatures with mid to upper 70s after the front comes through on Sunday. Ivan, thank you. Right now we have an update on a story we've been closely following on CBS News Miami. The 13 year old accused of stabbing his mother to death will learn whether he will stay in adult jail next week. He's currently in jail, reportedly separated from everyone else for 23 hours a day. He's accused of stabbing his mother, 39 year old Irene Garcia, while she slept next to her two week old baby in October. According to the arrest report, the teen called 911 and admitted to killing his mother. A Miami-Dade police officer is in jail this afternoon facing charges of armed kidnapping and armed sexual battery. 32-year-old Miguel Lomelli appeared before a judge a short time ago. His case was reset for this afternoon so he could find a lawyer. The judge ordered him to stay away from the victim. According to police, Lomelli was having an argument with his ex-girlfriend outside her home when things escalated and Lomelli allegedly grabbed the victim, took her inside the home and sexually assaulted her. Miami-Dade Police Director Stephanie Daniels released a statement which says in part, quote, there is no place for betrayal of public trust of any kind in the Miami-Dade Police Department. The allegations of misconduct by one of my officers is extremely troubling and immediate action has been taken to hold the officer accountable. South Florida rapper Kodak Black has been arrested in plantation. The artist, also known as Bill Capri, finds himself in jail once again on charges of possession of cocaine and tampering with physical evidence. Kodak Black is scheduled to appear before a judge later today. This is not his first encounter with law enforcement. He was most recently arrested in July 2022 in Fort Lauderdale on other drug related charges. Miami-Dade State Attorney Catherine Fernandez Rundle held a press conference earlier today to announce a major arrest in a human trafficking case. Two people are facing a slew of charges for their alleged role in a prostitution ring. Rundle thanked law enforcement for their effort and swift action and for preventing what she called a potential tragedy. I'm very proud and grateful beyond words for the incredible team of professionals that are part of our human trafficking task force 
and our law enforcement partners, many of whom you see standing here today. The state attorney also announced the arrest of a caretaker of an impaired 89 year old victim in an elderly exploitation case. CBS News Miami's Peter Dench will take a closer look into both cases starting at five. And now to the latest on the Israel Hamas war. They're now entering the third month of fighting. Natalie Brand is on Capitol Hill with the latest on the war and the fight on the hill over U.S. aid for Israel. On the eve of Hanukkah, students in Israel decorated menorahs in honor of the estimated 130 hostages still being held in Gaza. I hope that they get to see their family soon and um, that, they, that they'll come home safely before, uh, hopefully, to, to still celebrate the holiday. But for now, the fighting between Israel and Hamas escalates, with the Israeli military saying it's intensifying its offensive in southern Gaza, hitting targets in the city of Khan Yunus, considered a Hamas stronghold. We target Hamas. We do not not target civilians and we've been doing everything possible to get civilians out of harm's way while we go after the terror monsters who perpetrated the October 7th massacre. Israel has declared a nearby village a safe zone and thousands of Palestinians have fled there to escape incoming fire. United Nations officials say there are no safe places in Gaza and the Biden administration has urged Israel to do more to avoid civilians. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers are at odds over an emergency funding package proposed by the White House, which ties Israel aid to Ukraine and other national security priorities. The Senate failed to advance the bill Wednesday afternoon, with Republicans calling for more U.S. border protections. Ukraine's very important. So is Israel. So is Taiwan. But nothing's more important to me right now than securing our homeland that's the most exposed to a terrorist attack and other bad things. Uh, in modern history. As negotiations continue, the White House says President Biden conducted phone calls Thursday with leaders in the region, including Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Meanwhile, Senate Republicans have blocked an aid package for Israel and Ukraine from advancing. In a key procedural vote yesterday, senators voted 49 to 51, falling short of the 60 votes needed. Republicans insist that the aid package must be paired with major U.S. border security policy changes. Republicans and Democrats have signaled they are willing to compromise on the issue, but negotiations have not resulted in a bipartisan deal. And we'll have more news when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to your CBS News Miami 4 p.m. Quick Cast. The College Board has released the updated framework of its Advanced Placement African American Studies course. The organization leaving out some lessons Governor Ron DeSantis and the Florida Department of Education called out earlier this year for what they said was an effort to, quote, push an agenda on students. The new course will launch in the 2024-25 school year. Happening today, Hard Rock Casino is calling it a new era of gambling with new games like roulette and craps and for the first time ever in person sports betting. A star studded roster will help kick off the celebration. CBS News Miami's Jacqueline Quinn is in Hollywood with the details. Online sports betting will now be available through the Hard Rock and the online sports betting component is key. In fact, on the Hard Rock's webpage, it's the first thing you see, the announcement that it's legal. CBS News Miami was given a sneak peek at what's new at the Hard Rock Casino, roulette tables, craps tables, and sports betting in person, though you can do that from home now as well. If I were the Seminoles, I would be feeling very confident. Nova Southeastern University law professor Bob Jarvis tells us nothing is standing in the way after the Supreme Court in October rejected attempts to block the seminal compact signed with the state. I think if the Seminoles had real doubts, uh, they would not be uh, starting up, restarting their, their sports betting uh, and starting up craps and roulette. Um, this, I'm sure, has been carefully vetted not only by the tribe's lawyers, but by the state of Florida, which has been joined to the hip uh, with the Seminoles and has been consulting every step of the way. Casino goers we talked with had mixed reviews. I think it's good. If there's an audience for it, then why not? When you have all the gambling and then right after the end, you show if you have a problem, you should call this number. It's sort of like we're talking on both sides of our mouth. Now, Florida has had online sports betting before back in 2021, but that was challenged, and that's why we've seen that back and forth. That same group could challenge or appeal this again. For now in Hollywood, I'm Jacqueline Quinn, CBS News, Miami. Here's something you don't hear every day, and it's, of course, right here in Florida. A small community near Tampa is enjoying some of this cool air and winter weather, and 
ditching their clothes while they're at it. The gated nudist community says residents pride themselves on being a judgment free zone. They just want to be themselves and explore who they are, and this is a great place to do that. Property managers say lately they're seeing a boom in what they call naycations, and there's lots of options to choose from with rooms for rent designed with different themes from Alice in Wonderland, Boogie Nights, Old Cape Cod, and even Star Wars. Art Week is kicking into high gear, and CBS News Miami has your ticket to all the big events. Today, Lisa Petrillo takes you to the events known as Art of Black and Soul Basel. And tomorrow, we'll take a look at the art everywhere across South Florida that you and your family can explore. You certainly do not want to miss that. With the start of Hanukkah, South Florida is celebrating the holiday by hosting several menorah lightings. Miami Beach has one today at City Hall happening now. The Falls is hosting its Hanukkah at the Falls event at 6 p.m. And the city of Fort Lauderdale is hosting an event on East Las Olas Boulevard at 5.30 p.m. Next weather meteorologist Cindy Pressler will take us live to one of the celebrations during the news tonight at 5, 6 and 7 o'clock. The power of CBS News Miami and the CBS News Miami stream are always right at your fingertips. So easy to do and find us. We are on Pluto TV and it is all free or you can find us on your favorite streaming device with the CBS News app. Then click on CBS News Miami and that's your CBS News Miami 4 p.m. Quick cast. I'm Lauren Pastrana. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS Miami.